Hey everyone, this video is about the Geothermal Heat Pump POI in the Frosty Planet Pack DLC. It consists of this thing up here and these three vents down here which are connected to it. When this is filled with water and does this animation, it will eject debris and uh, the liquid that is being pumped in 150 degrees higher than it is uh, th than the temperature being pumped in. So this water is coming in at 94 it'll come out at about 250. So the very first thing you need to know when setting this up is that the third vent will be blocked. It has a lead obstruction. In order, to in order to clean it, you need to pump water at a high enough temperature to melt lead. This is somewhere around 370-ish degrees or so. So you need to pump in water or any other liquid that's about 150 degrees, or sorry, 250 degrees to get it to about 400 which will clear it. This only needs to be done once and then you will never have to deal with that ever again. So there are two main uses for the geothermal heat pump. One is to create a large power plant as I have here and that is the main use that I will be discussing in this video. The second use is to use the debris mechanic to get uh, rare minerals. When water gets spit out through these, a small percent of it gets converted to various debris like this rust, obsidian, etc. The type of debris you get is based on the temperature of the liquid pumped in. The hotter the liquid, the more valuable stuff you get, and you can get space materials if the liquid is hot enough. I believe if it exits around 1500 degrees, you can get stuff like thermia, or niobium and uh, graphite. Personally, I think that the mechanics of getting the space materials out of it are a bit too annoying. To deal with and it's easier to just get them from space and to just use this as a large power generator. One of the main reasons behind that is you have to kind of choose between one or the other. For example if you're pumping you know liquid that's coming out of here at 1500 degrees or something then you obviously can't use it for a power generation because that's too hot for any material to not overheat. Okay so as far as overlays go Here's our liquid overlay. Not much of a gas overlay, it's just the uh, gas pumps that I used to create the initial vacuum chamber. Automation overlay, more complicated than it looks. A lot of this automation is no longer relevant and I will be covering that shortly. It's from an earlier design version. Power is not too fancy, simply six transformers, one for each aqua tuner. Each one is also hooked up to a single gas pump. And conveyance, which consists of bringing the materials out and sending them through before up so they get properly cooled. All right, so first we need to look at an individual cell. And we're gonna look at this cell over here on the left because it's the most, uh, it's the cleanest one visually. So the connections are relatively simple. Once there's steam in the chamber, it goes up through the steam turbines, which then flows out through here. It's five turbines to fill a pipe. It then prios back toward the pump. And if it cannot to go back toward the pump, it then overflows back into the steam chamber. And this keeps it constantly running with no hiccups. The entire thing is essentially six of these side by side. We have six aqua tuners and we are using nectar as our coolant. Although I would highly recommend trying to get super coolant for it or uh, similar because with uh, super coolant you can do one aqua tuner per 10 turbines and with one aqua tuner per 10 turbines it's costing you half as much power. So when all these are running it's you know taking about 6 kilowatts or something whereas with only 3 it would be half as much and you would get much more power to actually use. That being said, this generates far more power than you will actually need. Uh, one quick note, this entire setup, the pump, is water negative. As I mentioned with the debris, a small percentage of the water that gets pumped in gets converted into debris, which means this will lose steam pressure over time and you do need to keep inserting water into it in order to keep it running. Right now, the way I have that set up is just with a, 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 my mainline water coming down here which is just simply hooked up to a switch and if I notice it getting too low I'll just turn it on for a couple cycles. 
This is notoriously difficult to automate and that brings us into the automation. So I initially had much more complicated automation set up here with a thermal sensor hooked up to these valves and uh, another set of automation hooked up to the main inject pipe which is coming straight down from the top. This thermo sensor automation wound up getting removed. I just have it set to always on once I realized I could simplify the piping to just work like this. Prio back into the pump and then overflow into the chamber. That's it. There's nothing else you need. No actual automation you need on the vent or anything. As far as this goes, the idea behind this was to inject water into the chamber once a certain, you know, atmo temp and pressure condition was met. I didn't actually know exactly what conditions I was going to use when I was building this, so I just set up sensors for all three, you know, figuring I could just set one to a value that would turn it to always on if I decided it was not relevant. But this whole thing kind of went out the window because of a certain major issue, which is that this stupid little Atmos sensor caps at 20,000. It will not go higher than 20,000, period. That's enough for, you know, a lot of smaller steam things, but in a chamber this big, you need relatively high steam pressure in order to get the entire thing firing. These vents overpressurize at roughly 120 kg, so you want to stay under 100 kg. I've got this up to 90 kg right now. I injected it with quite a bit of water right before I started this video to ensure that it would be running at near maximum potential so I could show what's happening with the power here. As you can see, almost all the turbines are running at, well not almost all, but almost all on the right side are running at max, but it drops down to the left. We do have reasonable steam pressure over here. It's 15 kg, but the temperature's not high enough. This is simply because these don't produce enough heat in order to keep it running at, keep every turbine running at 100% all the time. I originally made this uh, 15 turbines wide. It was just this. This whole thing barely fit into this, by the way. It was, you know, with the neutronium, it exactly fit with that little bit of neutronium and that little bit of neutronium there. It exactly fit 30 turbines. Um, you may or may not get this lucky, but the thing is you don't need 30 turbines. 15 turbines and simplifying this to have five turbines, you know, per with aqua tuner and then just having each five pump, like pump back in is a much simpler design and will get you something around 12 point something like 12.7 I believe was the number of kilowatts versus the absolute theorem, theoretical maximum which is roughly around 20 kilowatts it's kind of hard to tell exactly what it is you kind of just have to eyeball it by the turbines I mean I could just go and add up all these numbers but I can't be fucked doing that but you can kind of tell that you know with you've got roughly half of them running at full and then it drops off it winds up being a little over 20 turbines like maybe 20 21 22 turbines worth versus uh you know having just 15 turbines run all the time so you do need more than 15 if you want to get the absolute max power out of the geothermal pump with it pumping water through basically you need to have these three pipes always flowing at 10 kg per second into this and then it will fire off every time it gets full and that will get you max power but as I said that is more than 15 turbines can handle so if you do 15 they will just be maxed all the time um, and yeah you can go higher than that that being said most bases are gonna use way less than 15 turbines worth of power this base uses probably the most out of any of the bases I've built so far even the run I did after this on max difficulty blasted series uses far less power uh, that one runs on a single nuclear reactor. I made a video on that reactor, which only has 10 turbines. They're running, you know, at full time, and that's more than I need. So 15 turbines going all the time, especially if you have, you know, just one or two aqua tuners will be plenty. You may be able to get away with one aqua tuner for 10 turbines. I'm not sure. I've never, tr or 15 turbines I'm, with super coolant. I've never tried to push one that far. I do know that one on 10 with polluted water nectar, you know, a 4.0 SHA liquid is not going to be enough. You, you uh, like when I tested that out, I wound up having to temp shift uh, my turbines down on my reactor until I got super coolant. But uh, it, going up only 50% as much, right? Like going from a theoretical max to theoretical 10, maybe it'll equalize, you know, probably not at the, you know, zero degrees C that we've got over here. 
but it might equalize somewhere around like 40, 50 C, you know, which is fine as long as it doesn't overheat. So super coolant, 15 turbines, one or two aqua tuners is definitely the simpler and more efficient setup to get going. And it's probably the one I will do in the future because, you know, building an, an additional 15 turbines only to get essentially another five turbines out of power was, is kind of whatever. But, you know, I originally built this with 15, noticed everything was maxed, went, okay, let's see how much we can actually get out of it, made it as big as I possibly could, and that's what you're looking at right now. There is no failure mode on this, unlike a nuclear reactor or a petroleum boiler. If this thing gets too hot, like, you know, well, it can't really get too hot because the turbines can only put out water that's uh, 15 degrees or 95 degrees and no hotter than that. But if the water doesn't get injected, then it'll just slowly power down. There's no catastrophic explosion. You just need to eventually insert more water. Uh, one quick note about automation that I almost forgot to mention. Um, as I said, I am using a switch right now, and it's hard to automate because this thing can only caps at 20 kg, and you want much higher steam pressure. The idea I had to automate this properly um, that I never really got around to doing was to simply use a timer sensor and you know set it to cycle mode and have it be on, let's say, like one out of every five or something like that. What numbers you're going to have to put in that are going to be something you're going to have to figure out. It's something I meant to do at some point. But I wound up essentially finishing this run before I ever really got around to it. It's something that also takes a lot of time to figure out because the delay between the water being pumped into it, then the steam getting pumped out, and then the pressure equalizing, etc., etc., it, it's a quite a significant delay. For example, like when I stopped pumping water into here, it was 80 kg, and then you know 20 cycles later, it had risen up to like 95 kg, because that's how long it takes for everything to propagate throughout the system. It's a very slow system in that regard and with that i do believe that covers everything i hope i haven't forgotten anything if i have i'll include in the description and so that's the geothermal plant i'll do the overlays one more time here's your liquid right as the game saves at the worst possible time And uh, I guess the last thing I'll note on the liquid is that the way I've merged these up here is just to alternate the uh, the left ones or the right ones. For example, one of these on the left merges one on the right and so on. And the reason I decided to do it like that is because all of these happen to be on the right. The left side's empty. The left side's always going to be lower power. So it made sense to match like a high flow side with the low flow side and make sure that we are always getting 10 kg per second back into the geothermal pump. So yeah, this thing is, uh, I don't know, as I said, it's about 21, 22 turbines, so it's something around 20 kilowatts, give or take, 19, 18, so, somewhere in there. But it's it's way more power than you will ever need, and it only costs you water, although it will cost more water than you will expect, I will say that. I can't give you an exact number per cycle of how much water you need to inject to keep it going, because as I said, I never wound up fully automating that. But as far as general geothermal plant design, if you're looking to design it for power, then this is going to be something that you're going to want to do, is something like this. I will, one last note, these vents don't always spawn close together like this. I've seen seeds where one is like up here, one is down here, and one is over here. And if that happens, it's not too big a deal. You simply could just put five turbines above each one, you know, run the pipe back, etc. As I said, if I do this in the future, I will most likely stick to this 15 turbine version, which you know, get you something like 80% of the power and also simplifies the piping because you don't have to worry about a merge. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. I stream at Twitch TV, SF Hobbit.